Coming up this week on Saturday on the 26th, the boys and I have our annual Christmas market. Many of you have been asking for me to do a reveal on all of the things that we've been creating for the market. We've been working behind the scenes for the past two months preparing for this show. We have a lot of stuff that we work on through the day and we get so many comments about how, how do you guys get done so much in one day? But actually, in addition to doing all the things you've been seeing on our videos, we all the, we do other small like renovation things behind the scenes, but we are also have been working on the evenings when the kids get home from school, as well as on the weekends, preparing for our market. The boys have been helping me paint. They've been scroll saw cutting with the scroll saw. It's been so fun and so rewarding to do this tradition that we have every year of doing one Christmas market together. I had to make sure that we fit in time to prepare some inventory because we didn't want to miss out on doing it this year, even though we have a lot of other projects going on. I'll be completely honest, this year I feel like we're more prepared for this craft show than we have ever been for any of the shows we've attended before. We had so much more time to prepare because we knew about the show well in advance, as well as it's just been, the kids are a little older now and it was just more, because more time could be allotted to just like sitting and working together at the table. Their attention spans are obviously longer than when they were little kids. And they're doing so many more skills now, like hand painting things and using the squirrel saw. And just overall, it's just been like, we're just so proud of everything that we've been creating to get ready for this show. And I think every single item that we're taking, so much love and care and thought has been put into everything. So last year, our display looked a little different than what we're doing this year. This year, we were able to build a DIY shelf to put some ornaments on. We also were able to use some leftover scraps to be able to make a wooden dowel Christmas tree to display ornaments on. And we did our own DIY tablecloth, all of which the boys helped to prepare for this market. I think that overall, everything we've taken this year, it goes around the same theme. Like last year we did the Gone Coastal for Christmas, kind of like Cuckoo for Christmas. And since we are in the East Coast, I thought that was the perfect theme. And since last year things went so well at the market, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So we've decided that we're going to do that same theme again this year, except for we're taking so many different things that we didn't take last year. There's a few things that we did take last year that sold out before we even opened the market. Between the vendors and the hosts of the show, we had sold out and clearly needed a lot more multiples of some of the designs that we took. So I didn't even get to really show everything on the table last year that we made to the guests of the show because they were already sold before they arrived. So this year I focused on making a lot more multiples of things that we're predicting will be more popular and then recreated and redesigned a few things that were big hits last year that we wanted to make again, but wanted to put a new spin on it so it wasn't the same items. So I'm gonna do a little tour of all the things that we've been making and explain to you sort of what are the materials that we use to make them. Remember, every single thing that you're seeing was custom paint design made, custom scroll saw cut. We've created all of our own designs, drew them out on paper, traced them onto the wood, scrolled them out, and then put all of our designs from just our imagination into real life ornaments and different decor things we can take on our table. Before I give you the tour, I wanna to show you what last year's Christmas market looked like. If the wind could spread your love What if your sweetness could reach everyone There'd be no wars mm. Maybe the birds will sing about your heart Maybe the trees will whisper the word Maybe the sun will spread your joy To the ones who lost their hope I want to show you is these really cute hand scrolled hand painted I love you hands you can actually pick these up on my website elishaenglish.com if you like these will ship out on December 1st there is a limited number of these that you can purchase I didn't have time to do too many of them so if you do want one make sure you order right away especially so that they can arrive to you before Christmas but they come in yellow blue and teal I love that they're not the traditional Christmas colors. That way they could be hung on a little peg shelf or something all year round. 
So you would have seen on the display of last year's show that I created these really neat scroll saw cut and designed lobster boats. We live in a fishing community and there's a lot of lobster fishing families here. And so last year I only had six boats and they were sold before we opened. So this year I did similar design to last year, a few minor changes and were, was able to do a few different new color variations. Last year I was able to do a couple different color combinations. We did the red and green, the orange and blue, a little bit different of a blue and yellow, which this year I brightened it up a little bit and then Philip had the idea this year to do one in black and white so I went with that idea and I really ended up loving these ones honestly the most I think I'm gonna have to keep one for myself but you can see we use some old toothpick pieces I like the barbecue skewers to be able to make these little lobster nets and some little tiny rocks and paint to make lobsters we used some stamps that we already had to be able to do the monogram with the Nova Scotia these are those little wooden rings that you would put on like shower curtain rings or curtain rods and we were able to use just leftover beads. This is actually bug netting from a bug net hat that we upcycled. And then I've used some of my gardening jute for the strings. So we did not purchase anything to be able to build these and just use our scraps. So the second item that I have that we were so excited to make was our cute little penguin ornaments. Last year we did these with much larger, I would say more four inch size and then the larger styrofoam ball top. But unfortunately our truck broke down and I wasn't able to get to go to the fourth spot that we were finding those larger pine cones. So Philip had an idea to make mini ones with these cute little pine cones that we have right here on our acreage. And I actually kind of love them that much more. So I made a few different ones. Some have little yellow feet, some have yellow bellies. We used a bead that we painted orange to be able to create the little beak. Hand painted the faces on and then used felt that was left over from some other projects to create the wings and the feet. And then we did the little eye hooks in the top for the hanger and did use some different various jutes, some sort of more like nautical rope. I have some green macrame yarn. And then again, just some of my gardening jute to be able to hang them up. I think they're so cute. So we've created, there's a whole little army of penguins and we plan to hang them on that dowel tree. They look so cute hanging there. And last year we took several of these little vintage red truck cutouts, which I scroll saw cut and stenciled on. And then again, monogrammed with Nova Scotia on them. Last year we had several of these and they were totally sold out. I had kept one for myself, which is why I have this one. So I wanted to do something like that again this year, but change the style up just a little bit. So in my studio, I found a couple of these little bottle brushes that I had must have picked up at some point for some kind of project and decided to do the same scroll saw cut out with the actual truck. And then we made it look like the tree was actually in. So similar design as last year, but I feel like it got a huge upgrade. I'm also much better with a scroll saw now. So we now have a number of these ones ready. And again, I'm making multiples for everything, but I kind of just decided some things that were like really cute that I thought would be much more popular. I also obviously made a lot more of than some. So we'll just have to wait and see. You really just never know what's going to be the most popular. So when thinking about the designs, not only are we using upcycled materials like wood scraps and leftover paint and fabrics from different thrifted items, we also wanted to incorporate as many things from nature as we could, just like we did with the pine cones on the little penguins that we made. So these next few were inspired using just some things that you actually saw me picking up off of our lo local little ocean spot cove right by our house here. I was able to find a few pieces of sea glass and a few pieces of rocks that I could put together to create some ornaments. So these cute little Mary and Bright penguins are actually made with rocks. And so you can see that I've made a couple of really cute ones. I did use that same stamp that we had picked up from the thrift store with the new stamp pad from the dollar store to be able to do the Mary and Bright part. And then we just hand painted our design of our penguins on them. I think they're so adorable. I definitely need to keep one for our tree. I wanted to create something with snowmen because I just think it's so adorable and I love that our property looks so gorgeous when there's snow on it. It was just amazing last year in the winter. So I used some little pom-poms that came off of a pillowcase that we got at the thrift store, some rocks and some leftover beads to be able to create these circled ornaments. All of these circle ornaments we scroll saw cut out the um, top of the ornament just using a mason jar lid to be able to trace around, draw it out, scroll it out, and then hand painted our backgrounds before putting on our natural items. And then of course we used some sticks from the tree in front of our chicken coop to be able to make the arms of the snowman. 
These ones are absolutely adorable. Maybe one of my favorite ones we did using natural items. I did the owl be home for Christmas. You know I love puns. The rock is the actual owl there. And then we just made it look like, you know, the Christmas berries. And I just have two of these. I still need to drill the hole and do the hanger for these ones. Some of these you can see have the hole, but no hanger on them yet. And then with the sea glass that I found, I did some berry Christmas little polar bears and I used the sea glass for the ice. I'm just gluing the sea glass on where I want it in the water to look like it's really frosty with the sea glass. Last year, we had created a whole bunch of these little scrappy whales just using scrap wood, hand painted and scroll saw cut. We used some little beads that were off of an old macrame thing we found at the thrift store to be able to create the eyes. We only had 12 last year or 16, I forget exactly, but they sold out before we opened and we didn't have a chance to have any for the show. So we made a whole bunch of them. I think we have 36 whales this year. And because the boats last year were so popular, I decided to go with an ornament version since the other ones don't hang. We created these cute little Nova Scotia tugboats. We used some little washer grommets and things to be able to do the circles and then do the, stamp, the same idea sort of with the stamp. We used to some thrifted felt to be able to do the little hangers on them. I think they're so cute. We did them in a bunch of different colors. And because boats are obviously very coastal, we also made these 3D. We have 12 of these ornaments that open and we put the little sea glass chunks in the bottom, created a little tea towel designed thrifted sailboat that hangs in the middle. So what I did was I just cut the pieces of the tea towel that we picked up and made little wedges. That's actually a little furniture plug that you can put for the bottom. And again, a little barbecue skewer to create that. And they hang and then the sea glass looks like water. So adorable. So I definitely knew that this year, again, probably the boats and the whales would be popular. So you can see that we made a lot of multiples. And then last year I did make some macrame rainbows. I think I have seven different rainbows to take this year. And I'm just finishing up a few of these homes where the heart is. Nova Scotia is known for its beautiful little cute little houses. And I just thought it'd be really cute to have something that was about home. I wanted to make a few ornaments that would be inspired by a puffin tour that we did when we were not even moved to Nova Scotia yet, which made us fall in love with Nova Scotia. So we did four cute little ones with the puffins on them and did the little scenery of them standing kind of on the rocks in the water here. I did a few really cute lighthouse ones, a very coastal vibe. These just like hand painted, almost pretended like I was using little canvases and to create these ornaments. We wanted to have one that had some type of an octopus or something and some sailboats. So I thought that one was really cute. And then because I love puns, I needed to do a few ornaments that said Whaley Love Christmas. Again, all these are just hand painted. I just sat at night and just tinkered with my paint and some plain circles. And then of course, whales for Nova Scotia. I had seen a video online where they had seen some orcas, not where I am, but locally here in, uh, in the province of Nova Scotia, out in the ocean, some stormy days, and wanted to do a few orca ornaments. I think these might be one of my favorite ones we made for this market was these cute little owls. I've been dying to see owls here in our woods. I watch out for them all the time. So I wanted to do a little owl ornament with the kind of the night sky. And then I used a few pieces of wood that we had found at the ocean to be able to make the cute little perches that they'd be sitting on. And then since the boys and us, we always do a lot of skiing. Well, I guess the boys in Philip more do do some skiing before we moved here from Nova Scotia. I wanted to do a few cute skiing ones, let it snow. And then I did a couple of just to the moon and back. The boys are obsessed with space and I thought these are so cute. And so many families say love you to the moon and back. We knew for sure we wanted to have something that said seasons greetings for like the ocean theme pun. And so we came up with these cute little lobster ones. I just hand painted them again on the circles and then used the stamp to write the word seasons greetings. I think these are so adorable. I love how they have the beady little eyes and they're a little bit 3D. Even though they're on a flat ornament, I think they look really cute. And I love the little snowflakes on them. Anything that I had last year that said Nova Scotia was a really big hit, especially if it had something to do with my local community. Again, lobster fishing is super popular here. So I made these cute vintage red truck inspired Nova Scotia trucks with the lobster traps in them. I thought I would do the Nova Scotia blue kind of province color instead of the red for these. I think they're so cute. I only made four of them. I'm not really sure if they'll be popular or not, but I think they're absolutely darling. They're a little bit bigger than the ornament ones. You can see they're almost the size of my hand. And then I made a couple of artworks that were just the traditional sort of map with the heart of where our community is. These are just really small little canvases you could prop up. But these here, I'm not gonna put hangers on these. They're just gonna be shelf sitters and they'll actually stand up the way that I designed the bottom. So you could put these on a cute little display shelf. 
So these are a few things that were inspired from some ideas that Dayton had. I wanted to do some puffins and Dayton thought we needed some larger ones. So we took some scrap pieces of wood and we created our little puffin hanger here. He doesn't have his hanger yet on them. And you can see we're hand drawing out all of the designs after it's scroll side out before we do the hand painting. So I have three more ready to finish up this week before our market. And the boys have been doing some painted Christmas trees with little string lights. Again, we don't have the hangers on these yet. Just says, tis the season. I thought those were really simple, but really cute at the same time. And the boys are doing them completely on their own. And Dayton said, we absolutely had to have some crabs. This is just the first sample one. I'm just cutting some more out today. We've just done some little beads. If that'll focus some little beads for the eyes to make them look like little beady crabs. We're gonna hang the hanger with the eye hook in the middle with some little nautical rope something that maybe has a blue in it just to complement with the orange of the crab. They are so cute. I think we're gonna have about 20 of these. I think we have about 30 of the trees and then I'm just finishing up these four of our puffins. As you know, we had a bear visit our property this past couple of weeks and we decided to name him Mosey since he moseyed around the property for about a week. Chase decided he wanted to do a little bear ornament to commemorate our Mosey bear. And so he designed up this cute little bear who's got his hand on his head. We did a thrifted vintage scarf, which we cut up to be able to make the scarves for the bears. He was able to draw these out, help with the scroll saw cutting, painted them and put everything together completely on his own. So we have four of these adorable Mosey bears. And then we made one more that we can put on our own Christmas tree just to have a memorable thing from our actual first bear we had on our property. But we're gonna put the hangers on these. We have a few loose ends to tie up with some of the things, especially the hangers this week. So if you see things that don't have hangers, we're just not at that point yet, but way to go, Chase. These are so stinking cute. Okay, so another pile of handmade creations that we're taking. We created some little penguin ones with sea glass for the ice here on wood cookies that we cut from our property here. We did some little anchor East Coast vibe. Just I thought those actually would be so cute tied to the top of someone's Christmas present. You know that I'm obsessed with Nova Scotia rainbows and those macrame rainbows take so long. So I decided to do something a little bit simpler. I did sort of this sort of macrame idea and use the stamps, dreams really do come true. We just created a couple of fun colors. I'm just finishing those up with the hangers and the words for the rest of today. And again, inspired by our bear that we found on our property, we made some cute little Hudson Bay Coast sweater bears like our mosey and kind of Christmas them up a little bit and made just a couple of these little hand painted canvas bears. Again, with some tree cookies, you can see we have the tree rings on the back. We were able to create these cute little snowmen and I did use those furniture pegs again for the noses. I just drilled the hole through and then painted them up and then same beads from that same pack. And these are the other little snowmen that we made. So we cut these in all those little chunks that you saw that we cut out doing some things with our kitchen that were just left over. I just rubbed a little stain on the sides to make them look a little bit rustic, painted them, distressed them, added some stick arms from near the chicken coop and painted on them some cute little faces, which of course the boys helped with. And then I had a few pieces of sea glass left. So I used a leftover tree cookie to create a little sailboat scene. We cut out some Nova Scotia hearts to just do again, just a little bit of like love, Nova Scotia love. And you've already seen a previous previous video, but I created these shiplap seahorses made from scraps from the kitchen where we had those strips cut off the end. The boys and I painted all the strips, glued them together, and then we're able to make the shiplap look. And we love all of the different coastal vibe, really distressed coloring that we did with the nautical rope. And again, because we are in a lobster fishing community, I wanted to scroll out a bunch of really chunky lobsters. These are so cute. I have 20 of these made and Philip's mom has picked me up. Uh, it's just coming in the mail. It should be here in time. Uh, some little pretend string Christmas lights that I'm gonna use as the hanger. So it's gonna look like the lobster has pinched the Christmas lights and that that's what's gonna hang it from the tree, which I think is gonna be really cute and also add a little bit of colorful vibe to the tip of these, but how adorable. So I'll be completely honest with you. Over the past couple of years running different craft shows, I have kind of gotten a problem before each of the shows. I've kind of gotten the, what one of our YouTube family members labeled what she was feeling was analysis paralysis, where you have so many ideas and you don't know where to start and you're just so excited about this show that you can't 
literally group your creative mind together to be able to actually put your ideas into action. You're stressing over, is your stuff gonna be good enough? Is it gonna be what the market's gonna want? Is it gonna sell well? Are you gonna put money into something that you're gonna come home with? So many different things start running through your brain before you sign up for a craft show, especially if it's your first time. And I have been doing a craft show every year since the kids were born, and I think I get analysis paralysis every single year. But this year, I didn't. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna set aside any of the things that I'm thinking about, and I'm just going to create. I'm just going to sit down with a cup of tea with my boys in the evening, make some hot chocolate for the boys, and just sit and tinker. And I just took any idea that popped into my brain and was like, okay, that's what I'm gonna work on tonight. And I didn't overthink it, which I do all the time. I overthink what I'm putting together and you know, doing that analysis paralysis kind of thing in my own head. Think about it when I go to bed, think about it at 3 a.m., write a little list beside myself. But this year I just enjoyed the time making things. I just took all of the stress out of all of it and just stayed true to us, thought of what things inspired us, thought of what things we love, thought of experiences that we've had, experiences that we want to have, and just put all of that heart into each of the items that we are making. So I hope that you enjoyed seeing all the things that we've come up with and that we've worked on tirelessly over the past couple of weeks. It's been a lot of work, but again, the Saturday on the 26th will be so rewarding to have another day of our Christmas tradition marked off of the next several years here while the boys and I participate in this market together. We're going to show you everything that we're working on that we finish up this week. You're going to see the whole display, the whole day, the actual other vendors at the market, everything on the 26th. So in the evening of the 26th, we are actually at the show in the morning from 10 until 1. We're going to come back. I'll, I will put everything together from the show that day and you will see it that evening. So we're going to have a quick turnaround for you to see what it's going to all kind of come into shape. I'm going to show you, tell you how much we made, how much we've spent, kind of every detail you can think of about what's going on that day. We're going to share with you. Right now, I have spent a total of $24 on supplies. Uh, the $12 of that was actually just some of those round opening ornaments, but those were really popular last year and I wanted to make a few again this year. They were a lot of fun. I think overall, right now, just using all of the upcycled materials, not spending any money to prepare, really takes the stress off of things because there's no pressure to come home having made a certain amount of money. And then also the day to go to the show is only $10 and it's within 10 minutes from our house here. So didn't have to invest a lot of money to do the show, but definitely have invested a lot of time. So let me know what was your favorite thing that we created. If you were shopping at our table, what is something that you couldn't go home without? I am open to hearing all of your comments down below. Please leave one for me. I'm gonna pin our favorite comment for this video. Something new we're gonna do on our channel is start pinning our favorite comment from that video. So make sure you leave a comment. We can pin you at the top. I love you guys. Thank you always for being part of my creative adventures, regardless of whether they're outdoor projects, home renovations, adventures with my family, or even preparing for something like our craft show. It means so much to me that we have you on the other end cheering us on. And I couldn't wait any longer to show you what we've put together. I know our show is in a few days. I don't think anyone will you know, copy with things that we're doing, but if they do, it is what it is. We've kind of put together everything now at this point, just a few final touches and we get to go display everything on Saturday. So stay tuned. If you're not already subscribed, hit subscribe, turn on your notification bell. I love you and I will see you tomorrow. And don't forget, if you'd like to get any of our I love you ornaments for Christmas delivered before Christmas, head to elishaenglish.com. I will leave the link in the description.